Good afternoon, members of the board. This is our monthly ESSA update, and we will have uh, three of us coming and speaking with you. I will be talking about a quick update on ESSA. Dr. Howard will then be talking about uh, long-term goals and progress measures, and we hope that the uh, bulk of the time will be Mr. Pruitt talking about early learning and uh, ESSA opportunities. So I'm gonna jump right in. In your, on your e-board set of materials, you have six attachments. The first attachment is the actual PowerPoint that I'm going through. And the uh, first bullet up here talks about an infographic, which is a summary of the spring public comments. You'll recall a couple of months ago, uh, Dr. Atkinson and I talked about the six public comment sessions that we held across the state, and we gave you an overview of the kinds of comments that we were receiving. Attachment number six is um, this infographic that was done by one of our interns this summer, and coincidentally, the woman's first name is Summer, Summer Najjar. She's a UNC student in public policy, and this infographic is fantastic. It, gives you a visual of what kinds of comments were made most often. She color-coded some of the graph, some of the images to identify whether the comment was made by a parent or a teacher and or a member of the public. Um, and it's really cool and it's very succinct and uh, I would encourage you when you get a chance to take a look at it. Last week, <coughs> Dr. Atkinson, myself, and uh, Donna Brown uh, made a presentation on ESSA to the House Select Committee on Education Strategy and Practices. Uh, that presentation, uh, I, I believe, was well received by the committee. Um, we shared with them uh, several handouts, and so if you look at the attachments that we've included, uh, the handouts and the PowerPoint that we presented at that House Com Select Committee meeting are in your materials. And we made it very clear that we have a misalignment between the A through F grading system and the requirements of the SSA. Uh, Representative Blackwell, who's the chairman of the committee, specifically asked uh, us to come back maybe more frequently so that we can keep them up to speed on where we are in our process. Because as he said, we want to make sure that we can maybe start uh, making some things line up so that when the General Assembly comes back to town in mid-January, um, they won't be getting hit cold with some of the changes and the misalignment issues. Also, one of the attachments you have is an updated list of the stakeholders. We now have over 90 organizations that are on our list of uh, uh, associations or organizations. And those individuals who head up those associations and organizations uh, will be invited to an external stakeholder meeting, which will be our second one. Uh, it'll be held sometime in the fall. And then I did have one hot off the press uh, thing to mention. Uh, just in the last two to three hours, uh, the U.S. Department of Ed has issued their uh, draft regulations on the supplement, not supplant issue. And... Uh, CCSSO has already come out saying that they're very concerned about it. And Chairman Klein, who is the head of the House um, Education and Workforce Committee, had this to say. What the Secretary is proposing is unprecedented and unlawful. The only way to make this right is to scrap this convoluted regulatory scheme immediately. Members of the Congress came together to pass bipartisan reforms that are designed to help every child receive an excellent education. And we will not allow this administration to undermine these reforms with its own extreme partisan agenda. Hot off the press, um, we're going to have some interesting times ahead. And uh, I think I predicted that that's where we were going to find ourselves. And we're there. Um, and at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Howard. <laughs> 